Hello. In this week's Torah portion, Mishpatim, we're given a commandment that is repeated three times in the Torah. Lo tevashel gedi behalev aimo. You will not cook a kid in its mother's milk. This commandment was interpreted to mean that milk products and meat products, in Hebrew, basar behalav, must never be together. Let's explore this Jewish law in some detail and try to fathom the reasons for it. Let's begin with a joke that summarizes the detail of the laws and addresses the fact that the injunction is repeated three times. God says to Moses, You will not cook a kid in its mother's milk. Moses replies, You mean we may not eat meat and dairy products together? God says, You will not cook a kid in its mother's milk. Moses replies, You mean we should have two sets of dishes and utensils, one for meat and one for dairy? God says for the third time, You will not cook a kid in its mother's milk. Moses replies, You mean we should wait six hours after eating meats before we can eat dairy? Then God sighs and says, Have it your way. Actually, the Talmud interprets this triplicate commandment as meaning three different things. First, do not cook milk and meat together. Second, do not eat milk and meat together. And third, you may not benefit from a mixture of milk and meat. For example, you can't feed milk and meat to your pets. This is in contrast to non-kosher animals from which Jews are permitted to derive benefits. The Baal HaTurim, 14th century Spanish rabbi, notes that the gematria of do not cook a kid, in Hebrew, lo tevashel gedi, is the same as the gematria of it is the prohibition of eating, cooking, and deriving benefits, in Hebrew, he isur achila ubishul vehana'a. Let's look at the details. A kid means not only a baby goat, but also a calf, or a lamb, or any tender young animal. Why? The Talmud says that it's because when only a baby goat is intended, the Torah says gedi aizim, not just gedi. The Talmud also interprets meat to include fowl, even though fowl do not produce milk. This is a prohibition mid Rabbanan, that is, a rabbinic prohibition, and it is due to Rabbi Akiva. However, the Rema, 16th century Polish Rabbi Moses Isserlis, rules that one may derive benefit from a mixture of chicken and milk. Meat, however, does not include fish or locusts, so fish and milk may be eaten together, although many Sephardic Jews avoid that mixture. May one cook milk and meat together if one of them is from a non-kosher species? The Talmud says yes. However, there is a dispute on the appropriateness of doing so because of arit ein, that is, doing something that may appear to be prohibited and give witnesses the wrong idea. Among the sages, the Rashba and the Rema say not to do it, whereas the Shach and the Taz say it's okay to do it. May one cook milk and meat together if the meat is from a kosher species but was improperly slaughtered, in Hebrew, a nevela. The matter is in dispute. The Rambam says one may do it, but the Rashba prohibits it. A practical implication is, can you feed such a mixture to your dog? If some milk falls accidentally in a meat dish in a proportion of less than one part in 60, the mixture may be eaten. One sixtieth is considered to be the threshold for being able to taste or smell the milk. In Hebrew, that principle is called batel beshishin, nullified in 60. Rav Moshe Soloveitchik rules that one may cook but not eat milk and meat together for a scientific experiment if it yields a material benefit. Now, what are the reasons behind the prohibition of mixing milk and meat? We don't know, of course. The traditional answer is because God says so. But in the Talmud, Rabbi Akiva said, we are enjoined to speculate on the possible reasons behind the commandments, ta'amei ha-mitzvot, provided, of course, we observe the commandments no matter what conclusions we reach. One possible reason is that it is a discipline measure. Its purpose might be to introduce discipline in our lives, particularly where food is concerned, so we remember that food comes from God. 
Another reason is its association with idolatry. Some idolaters of old did just that as a fertility rite. Some even sprinkled mixtures of milk and meat on fields to ensure a good crop. Abravanel, the 15th century Spanish sage, reports that this was still done in his time. Another reason is the avoidance of cruelty. The Ramban, 12th century Spanish sage, says, You shall not cook a kid in his mother's milk is right next to You shall be a holy nation unto the Lord your God in the Torah. So the mixture is not inherently bad, but must be avoided because it is unholy and cruel. Cooking a baby in the milk that was intended to nourish it certainly sounds cruel. The Sforno, 15th century Italian sage, adds that it is an inhumane practice, akin to taking eggs from a nest while the mother bird is watching, a practice explicitly forbidden by the Torah. Another reason is that it is the wrong mixture of symbols. Meat symbolizes death, and milk symbolizes life. The Shlach HaKadosh, 17th century sage from Prague, says that meat stems from God's attribute of justice and milk from God's attribute of mercy, and these two opposites must not be mixed. Samson Raphael Hirsch, 19th century German rabbi, suggests that meat is taking and milk is giving, two opposites that must not be mixed. Some commentators assert that the mixture of milk and meat is bad for your health, but so far, no science has backed up this claim. Others say the rule was intended to set the Jews apart and make it harder for them to socialize with Gentiles. Then there are mystical reasons, alluded to in the Sefer HaChinuch, the book of education from 13th century Spain, which discusses all 613 commandments from a legal and moral perspective. A final reason is that all mixtures are generally frowned upon in Judaism. For example, there is <clears throat> the prohibition against mi mixing wool and linen in clothes, called shatnes, the prohibition against planting mixtures of seeds, grafting and crossbreeding seeds, the prohibition against crossbreeding animals, the prohibition against plowing a field using animals of different species, the prohibition against combining two different occasions to celebrate, such as a wedding and a Jewish holiday. In fact, an entire tractate of the Mishnah, Kilayim, is dedicated to forbidden mixtures. It has a Gemara commentary in the Jerusalem Talmud. So there you have it. <clears throat> the Jewish thinker Ahad Ha'am once said, more than Israel has kept Shabbat, has Shabbat kept Israel. He could have said that about any of the ritual commandments, such as not mixing milk and meat. They keep us together. Shabbat Shalom.